Come on, come on. Uh, take somebody's hand, if you will. Stretch across the aisles. Leave no one untouched. And surely when we consider the ecological systems, when we give some consideration to the geopolitical state of the world in which we're in today, when we give consideration to what's happening in our own country, and I have not begun to talk about what's happening in your life personally, if there's ever been a time that we need to pray for one another, certainly that time is now. And I've learned something over the years that whoever you pray for, you'll be able to forgive. Whoever you pray for, you will not be envious when God blesses them. Whoever you pray for, you will learn to support and hold up when enemies arise, whoever you pray for, you will be in their camp. Because there is one person who you cannot fool when you pray for somebody. And that's God himself. Squeeze those hands so tightly, Father, in the name of Jesus. We honor you, we lift up, we exalt, we exult. We macrograph your holy name. And we thank you because you have allowed us into your presence. And you've been kind enough to keep us alive for yet another day. I pray now, Lord, that you bless the hands we hold. Touch my brother and my sister. And I thank you because I'm touching somebody who is touching you. And we know the battle is already won. We pray for triumph right now for this whole house that your blessings will be upon us in a way that we know it's you and i pray god that you bless until you get through and we claim the victory right now so i squeeze joy in these hands i squeeze power in these hands i squeeze deliverance in these hands i squeeze a fresh anointing in these hands i squeeze financial prosperity in these hands I squeeze mental healing in these hands and I claim it in the name of Jesus. Bless my brother and my sister and I speak it done right now. And if you believe God, loose those hands and give God the glory. He's worthy of all my praises. I don't know what you come to do. I come to praise the Lord. I come to clap my hands. I come to jump for joy. I don't know what you come to do. No. He's worthy of our praises. You may be seated if you can. Surely we honor the Lord and We've given great praise to be in the house that God has placed your overseer, the Honorable Prophet Noah D. Floyd. Amen. Give God praise. Give God praise. And to his lovely wife, Tiffany. Amen. And to Trinity. His, oh, yes, there's Trinity. I met her already. Amen. Floyd Noel Jr. and Ariel Floyd. We thank God for his family. And for all of my fellow yoke servants in the vineyard, for everyone who expostulates the word of God on every level, and to that melodious and euphonious praise team. Amen. And, and to this distinguished band. Amen. I have the best in the land, but they come a good second. 
We just thank God for all of you. We're just grateful to the Lord to be here in your presence. Now, we live in a time where leadership is difficult and hard to find. And it's interesting if you have ever read Isaiah, somewhere around the early parts of Isaiah, maybe about five or six, where the Lord said that I'm going to punish Israel by removing certain facets of leadership. He says, I'm going to take away the artificer, that's the individual who has the ability to create wonderful things, aesthetic. I'm going to take away the captains of 10, the captains of 50, the captains of 100. I'm going to remove all of the leaders. And I'm going to let a child rule. Not a child in terms of chronology, not age-wise, but a child in terms of psychology, the mental state. Because we have a lot of leaders who are extremely narcissistic. You know when a child has come into its own. You, 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 you ever see little baby when they come into its own? And when they come into their own, their hands this tiny, and they are mine. Now they have just discovered that they are now separate from who you are. When they can say mine. Little hands so tiny, you can't hold anything. I take anything from you, but you call it mine. Well, what he's saying is that I'm not dealing with the chronological situation, but the psychological situation when you have leaders who are so narcissistic and so selfish that even in their leadership roles, they only think of themselves. When God blesses you with someone who cares about you, you ought to thank God for that person every day. Amen. 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 Because nobody remembers takers. We only remember givers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, takers, who's remembering a taker? But when you have a giver, someone who stays before God and studies the word of God and comes to present to you the word of God then you ought to give God thanks for that person every day mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, Saturday night while you're out shopping you're going through Gucci and trying to get through Valentino and and sometimes when you can't buy it, you just touch it. You know how to go. But while you're doing that, the man of God is in front of the books, trying to hear from God. He has to have one foot in the problem and the other foot in the solution. And when he delivers a word, it seems as if he's only talking to you. God is the only one I know who can take one voice and talk to thousands of people and each believes the message is only to them. It takes dedication. It takes focus. It takes a love for the word. It takes an inner drive. And when God has blessed you with that kind of a gift, you ought to give God praise and give God, God, give God praise for this man of God. Amen. Give God praise for this man of God. And I thank God for Prophet Bobby Baker who stands beside him. Now, before I go any further, which one of you women would want to share a man with all of y'all? Y'all might as well sit down there. I want you to sit down before you fall down. <laughs> there are
there has to be a certain amount of security that embodies any woman who would share her husband with all of y'all. Amen. There has to be a great amount of security. And it's the kind of security that you can't give to somebody. Amen. I wish I were down there. It's, could, could you move all this down there? Is it possible? Would it interrupt the cameras and all of that? The lighting and all that? Because I, I want to see the white of your eye. It's a critical thing, and it's something that you probably have to be anointed to do. To be able to freely share an intimate mate with the rest of the people without making that life difficult. <laughs> and it's a marvelous thing when you have somebody in your life who knows what your calling is and is not intimidated by what God has ordained for you to do. And this is where the strength comes in relationships. And it's marvelous when you see Tiffany enjoying her husband sharing his life with all that God has called him to be over. So I want you to put your hands and give praise to God. Amen. And give God honor for this woman of God and great support. We thank God. And of course, you've got a pastor that's multiple in his operation was a barber marketplace entrepreneur, founder of Triumph Church, and he just keeps going on and on and on. That's marvelous. And tonight we're going to, we, you know, we should do that right now. Uh, bring me some oil. We're going to pray and anoint him as not only the pastor, but the prophet of the house. And... Come on, prophet. Come on, Bobby. I need your help. And when you, when you think about Elijah and Elisha, and one of the things that I have learned, maybe I'll talk about it later, that everything has shelf life. limited shelf life so no matter how ingenious no matter how creative no matter how intellectual no matter how powerful we are everybody has a shelf life amen uh, it's an interesting dynamic that none of us is indispensable or Peter, James, and John would still be here. In spite of the fact that none of us is indispensable, some of us are irreplaceable. Because we just happen to be one of a kind. But when I consider Elijah and Elisha, and the double portion of the spirit, I have learned that that double portion is all that Elijah has and everything that Elisha will be. And what keeps me alive and extends my shelf life is I relate to men and women who are significantly important in the contemporary environment that I'm passing out of. So as I mentor younger men and women they mentor me i give them sage old wisdom 
and they give me the contemporary understanding of the Gen Z's and the Millennials and the Alphas that I don't have any clue about. So as I pray for him, I am praying that whatever intellectual cognitive energy that God has given me for my theological walk, it will be transferred to him and add that to everything he already is. And he will be a giant in the name of Jesus. The enemy is looking at him right now and getting ready to target him. But every time he targets him, you're going to take him higher, Lord. You're going to move him to another dimension. So I pray right now that you will open him up to spiritual understanding. That there is nothing that you will not run across his mind and talk to him about. And I claim the victory in the name of Jesus. That prophetic mantle, let it fall on him right now. Let every word he speaks, let it be accurate. Everyone he touches, let them be blessed. And I claim the victory in the name of Jesus. And while you are blessing others, bless everyone in his household, every one of his children. Let them not be neglected, but let them feel the love that he has for everybody else. And I speak it right now in the name of Jesus. And I need everybody in this congregation to lift your voice and say, do it, Lord. Do it, Lord. We expect it done in Jesus' name. Yeah. Yeah. Give God the glory. Give God the praise. In the name of Jesus, hey, bless his wife. Give her the strength to walk with this man of God and stay with this man of God no matter what comes their way. And I speak it done right now in, oh, in Jesus' name. Oh. Can't nobody do me like Jesus, can't nobody do me like the Lord can do me, can't nobody do me like Jesus, be my friend, I said my Somebody said you my body told me to run Saint, in St. Matthew's Gospel, St. Matthew's Gospel, uh, chapter 25. And I want to begin reading at verse 14, and I'm going to read very quickly. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. Unto one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with them, with the same, and made them other five talents. And likewise, he that had received two, he also gained other two. But he that received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, 
the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them. And so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful. Few things I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Then he that had Receive the one talent. Came and said, Lord, I knew that thou art an hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown, gathering where thou hast not strong. And I was afraid and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast that is thine. His Lord said unto him, Thou wicked, slothful sir. Thou knewest that I reap where I sow, not gatherest where I have not straw. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchange. And then at my coming, I should have received mine own with usury. Take there the talent from him and give unto him which hath five. I should have had some resistance there. Take the talent from him and give unto him that hath. Pass the one who has five. And give it to the one who has ten. And here's what we call an axiomatic truth. To him that hath shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath. Cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And the Jamaican lady said, I have no teeth. And the preacher said, there shall be weeping and gnashing of gums. Look at somebody and tell them, since you have it, use it. You may be seated. You may be seated. Now, anytime you deal in Matthew towards the end, you're dealing with what we call eschatological passages. And eschatology is simply dealing with last day events, which includes obviously judgment. The eschatological presentation is significant because Everybody who has had any relationship always wants to know what are your last words. I wanted to know my sister was with my father when he died. And I wanted to, I asked Grace, well, what did dad say? What did he say? And then it was interesting that he left a letter with one of the people who cooked for me at the time, now I don't have to worry about that. I have in my own house the most wonderful chef. Incredible. I'm, so, I'm getting hungry all of a sudden. But he left a letter with her for me and told her not to give me the letter until he was gone. So I understand on a personal note the significance. It's like he was talking to me from the grave. The last words. The last words of Jesus throughout the Gospels become significant because he is prophetically telling us what's going to happen in judgment. And he is indicating to us that there is nobody who falls under the purview of his administration, and that's everybody. Nobody is without a gift. I want to talk to, I want to talk to, you know, Bishop Ulmer is a good friend of mine. I don't know if you've heard that name. 
But every now and then, he'll say, I'm going to talk to this side. This side's anointed. I'm gonna... Everybody that comes into this world comes in here naked. And everybody's going to leave here naked. But between the two nakednesses, it's your gift that's going to bless others and feed your household. Now, it's important to understand that since we're dealing with a God who is eternal, he's eternal and he is omniscient. Now, when you put those two attributes together, you have a significant power curve. Can I, can I, uh, Bishop, can I take my time? Uh, all right, uh, you know, I can hoop anytime. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lord. See, see now, you know, see, you see what you all allow, see how you all mess the preacher up. I give an example and, I, and remind me where I was. I'm at the age now where I have to get reminded. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, Lord, I'm on this side of the church and I just want to walk over to the podium. Touch your neighbor, say, Nay, he's walking to the podium. Now, all I'm saying, all I'm saying is I'm walking from that side to the podium. So why I got to moan and groan and, and get tired? When you look at his omniscience, then you know that there is no quote unquote time in the existence of God where he didn't know everything. Omniscience. That means he has all knowledge. But I want you to take the omniscience attribute and put it with his eternalness. Which means he is eternal, which indicates that he has no beginning and he has no end. I want you to take that omniscience, which means he always knew all things, and put it with his eternalness, he always existed. Are you, you're walking with me now. We're going down the aisle together. We were chosen in him and you were gifted in him before the foundation of the world. Which simply means then, and, and might I just throw this word in, it's an anthropomorphic term because it deals with something in the heavens that has to be explained on earth. So when you say chosen in him before the foundation of the world, it's an action that didn't really happen. Since he is eternal, he has no beginning, no ending. He always existed. But in his always existedness, he knew all things. So there was never, quote, unquote, time, which doesn't apply, in the existence of God that he didn't know you. So when he knew himself, and he always knew himself, he always knew you. This is why the devil can't stop your gift. He can't stop your gift 
because it was eternally given. Gifted before you were born. Oh, uh, so he calls his own servants, which means you don't belong to yourself. I'm having a good time. What that means is you can't determine where or when he's going to move you. Because he doesn't fall within the parameters of your plans. You fall in the parameter of his plan. How might I put this? How might I put this? If we're going to have breakfast today, I would rather be the chicken than the hog. Because we're going to have eggs and we're going to have bacon. In order to have eggs, nobody has to die. But in order to have bacon, somebody's got to give up their life. See, we want to operate with God as chickens. But God wants to treat us like hogs. And that is, I'm not here to run you or you run me. But I'm here to control you because you belong to me. So many times you're upset because you feel things aren't moving as quickly as they should. But you're not on your timing. You're on God's timing. Ah, I feel like shouting here. Personally, I was in Longview, Texas for many years. And when I was in Longview, I traveled and I knew I was going to go either to Chicago or Los Angeles. I didn't know when. But I worked in Longview as if I wasn't going anywhere. But way in the back of my mind. So whatever I went through in Longview, it prepared me for where I am now. But the circumstances of the move were heartbreaking, distressing, painful. But it was God's way of moving me where he wanted me to go. Uh, can, can I go deeper before I go higher? Uh, what do you think got Joseph to the palace? It wasn't love that got him there. It wasn't niceties and being kind. What got Joseph to the palace was hatred. I want to talk to somebody that's going through something here. It was not a supernatural move of God to bring the hatred. The hatred was a natural outcry of Jacob's behavior. Yeah. All right. He's got two wives. He's got Leah and he's got Rachel. He doesn't like Leah. And, and, no, no, just... I, I don't know, we got young people in here, but, so I can't really t tell the story like I should, but now can you imagine the kind of, you see, a Western woman don't have no clue about what happens in the East, but, or in antiquity, can you imagine, they, they're intense. 
And each night he decides he wants to be with Rachel, but he got to deal with Leah. And Rachel got to hear him dealing with Leah. Now, Jacob is not only going with Rachel and Leah, he's going with all the maids. So imagine the family is sitting around the table having dinner. And one boy says, next boy, you ain't nothing but the maid's child. You ain't got no right to be here. Can you imagine the tension around the table with the boys hating each other? And if you want to really understand how bad they were, see what Jacob says at the end of his life when he is blessing his boys. Then all of a sudden, in the middle of this, Rachel has a child, and the Bible says he loved him. And the Bible says they hated him. And if you look in that text, you will see hatred move from one level to the next, because this boy has the unmitigated gall and audacity to say that we are going to serve him. Hatred was prevalent. Don't you ever tell me that your gift is going to be held because somebody doesn't like you. Don't ever tell me that you will not get to where you're going because somebody's plotting against you. Because when God gave you the gift, he knew the course you'd have to take. And he'll strengthen you to take every task and overcome everything you have to face to get where God has ordained you to be before the foundation of the world. You are not your own. You don't determine how you get there. So now, because you're not your own, you're going to have to answer to him for your character. There are many gifted people that we don't use because they have no character. And many times God holds your gift until he builds your character. Oh, I, well, I wouldn't tell you my journey. While you're sitting there arguing about why you are not being used, I know that you have a lead voice. But can you faithfully sing background? I know that you're the head of the women's department. But you also work with the bereavement department. Can you be faithful when you're not in charge? Can you hold somebody else up and give somebody else support until the time comes for you to be supported? God will hold your gift until he builds your care. God 
is not in the business of being embarrassed. And the sustenance of your character for your gifts are unquestionable. Because your character, your gifts rather, will put you in the lights. But your character puts you in the basement. I was flying many years ago from, from San Diego. I was on my way back to Texas, and I was actually preaching in the church that I pastor now, but because of the fog, I had to go to San Diego to get back home on time. And while I was flying, I was sitting beside a gentleman who was in the American University in San Diego, and we picked up a conversation, and he said to me, it's interesting that many of your star basketball players have made millions of dollars while they are playing. And six months after, or six years, I think the average is, after they get out, they're broke. And I simply said to him, I said, what it takes to make it is what it takes to keep it. So if you get something simply because of your gift, but you don't build your character to maintain it, you will soon lose it. This is why God many times beat us up real good before he releases the great blessing. And most of us will tell you, if I had gotten this earlier, I wouldn't have it today. Uh, give somebody a high five and say, don't worry, God's just working on your character. Uh, the gift is already ready. The, the character just needs to come up. The gift is already there. You just need to be built. The gift is already there. The blessing is already there. He's just working on you to get ready for the blessing that he's about to give you. Right now, the blessing is too big for you. So you have to answer for your character. Yeah, yeah. And then he gave them his goods. So you don't belong to yourself. And the gifts he gave you don't belong to you either. So you not only have to answer for your character, you're going to have to answer him for what you did with the gift he gave you. Oh, it's going to. Uh, you're fasten your seatbelt. He is the one who has gifted you. To bless others. Yeah. Your gift is not yours. Yeah, that's right. I don't care. Uh, when I was, uh, you know, hooping is something you have to practice. So I'd, I'd hoop, you know, with a mirror in the bathroom. And, and I would take the Bible and I'd, I'd do it like this. Uh, uh, then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art an hard man. So I practice like that. Now, I don't care how melodious and euphonious it is in the bathroom. It ain't blessing nobody but you. And when God gifts you, you can't hide your gift because he puts no gift under a bushel. A city that is set upon a hill cannot be hid. I, I, 
I got to talk to y'all. I, I got to work with y'all. How many times have you tried to reduce yourself to fit with a group of people who ain't going nowhere? Maybe, maybe, my, maybe my wife is listening. Maybe she's watching. Before we got married, we were having a banquet at church, and she said to me, uh, Noel, help me go pick out a dress for the banquet. I said, okay. I said, look, I, I got a lot to do. I'm not about to go into any one of these stores and you try on everything in the store before you come back to the first one you tried on. I'm in a hurry. I got things to do. She goes in and the man picks a dress off the mannequin and places on her. And he said to her, I knew I had to marry her then. He said to her, would you model for us? I mean, it was just that pristine. And she said to me, you know, this might be a little overwhelming because, you know, there's a lot of people that don't like me at the church. And, and maybe I shouldn't come out like this. I said, let me tell you what you just said. You said that you want to be less than the best you can be to satisfy some people who don't like you. Anybody who's in your space that cannot appreciate you at your best shouldn't be in your space. The gift belongs to him. Your talent belongs to him. When you play to the best of your ability, sing to the best, administrate, operate within the parameters of gets, whether it's economics, whatever it is, it belongs to him. And when he looks through the earth and sees his gifts moving to the blessings of others, you're blessing him. Now, you all, you all, you, you all sit down for a minute. Now, he gives gifts because of his limitless efficiency. He does not give multiple gifts to people who aren't going to use them. Notice who didn't use theirs. Not the one with two, not the one with five. He does not give multiple gifts when he knows they won't be used. So a gift that is not used doesn't become a blessing. It becomes a judgment. Mm -hmm. I'm going to show you a little later. I, 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 do I have it? I, you know, I don't want to keep you, you know. Uh, the, he gives the gifts according to their several ability. So that means it's not a happenstance. He's, he's not in Vegas with it. He has, through his omniscient brilliance, brilliance ascertain your capacity and he's giving you the 
the gifts according to your capacity to handle. It's not a fluke that you are who you are, where you are. It's not a fluke that sometimes you think you're dreaming something that God is giving you a vision of. And many times you might think you got to go out somewhere to get it. But it's already in you. <laughs> I feel like shouting here. I feel like shouting. The Lord blessed me a little bit so that I'm intoxicated with the exuberance of my verbosity. I can talk. But he didn't give me no singing with it. You see, I started a song a while ago, everybody just quit. <laughs> Yet I know friends of mine who can play, sing, produce, write, preach. And I say, oh my God, look at that. Because the thing that I would like to do the most is right after our great singer sang her song and the praise team sang, it's for me to get up and just roll into that song. <laughs> just get in it with the dynamics. Uh, you know, and, and sometimes, you know, then the singers know they can sing. We want you to pray for me, the Lord, and I'm going to try. Come on now. Now, here is a problem, and I'm going to say one word. Envy. <laughs> you see, what most of you call jealousy is envy. Now, from the Hebrew word, the Hebrew, the Hebrew word envy the etymological root of the Hebrew word for envy is fire for what belongs to someone else. The etymological root for jealousy is fire for what you possess. All right, I'm going to make it plain. Now, uh, can I digress? Allow me to digress. Now, jealousy... It's a whole other teaching. Jealousy is a sin. I'm trying to find the, where the insecurity is. I'm trying to find in this house, is it more towards the male or the female? The insecurity. Jealousy is a sin. And yet, God brags about being a jealous God. Every time I read, I'm a jealous God. And I'm saying to myself, I got saved to be like him. So how come it's okay for him to be jealous? And not me. See, when I'm teaching young, young pastors and preachers to, to preach, this is what you call upsetting the equilibrium. You say something that's like, oh, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> something wrong with that. And then you go to the Baptist boys where you got to prove it now. You got to argue the text. I love it. In order to be jealous, you got to own something. I know you think you own your house. I think you think you own your wife or you own your husband. You don't own anything. Argue with me. Since you own something, 
When we put you in that hearse, get you a U-Haul. Now let, let's argue scripture. The earth is the Lord. The fullness thereof, the world and they, does they include your wife? Does they include your husband? And they that dwell therein. That's why you better treat her right. Because you're going to have to answer to God for him loaning her to you. You better treat him right. Mm, I don't care how mad you are, cook. All right, my digression is over. Envy is the ugliest sin of all. Because the other sins might give you a little pleasure and get you in the end. But envy makes you sick immediately. Now, you pull up in a Mercedes that God owned you. And somebody's distressed over it. That ain't jealousy. Because he didn't loan it to them. He loaned it to you. So you went to the mall. You went over the needless markup. I mean, Neiman Marcus. <laughs> and you know when you, when you really can't buy something, you, you know you just touch it. You know, like I said. Ooh, you touch that Valentino. You touch the... Valencia, you, oh, you touch an embryoni, you just touch. And then you walk in the church and what you couldn't buy, somebody saunters up into the house and you get sick immediately. And envy carries with it some of the most damnable statements about people you don't even know. She can't afford it. She got it on. <laughs> I know somebody's buying it for her. You ain't seen her bank account. I live with a woman. I ain't got to buy nothing. and take care of everything. Uh, slow down, baby. Uh, well, the bishop, the bishop, that's why she looking like a... No, 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 don't get it confused. She's looking like that because of her giftedness. The only wonderful thing is when you can combine two giftedness. The sky is the limit. You see, one of the wonderful things about being gifted is to enjoy somebody else's gift. And when you walk in a room and somebody's blessed, uh, can, can I work this? Get, get, come over, give me three brothers real quick. Three brothers run over here. Uh, Bishop, go sit down. Uh, bring me three brothers right here. Three brothers right here. Three, three brothers, three brothers. All right, look that way. Look that way. Look that way. Uh, now, I am... Looking at how God is blessing my brothers. I am not at all in any awe or troubled because I'm giving God glory for God blessing my brothers. I'm enjoying their blessings. I'm enjoying how God is moving them to the next level. I'm having fun seeing how God has taken them from nothing, made something out of them because of the gift they have. So when they come around, I'm having fun. When God sees me praising him, even though I came in last, turn around. He turned the line around. So I was last, but now I'm first because I enjoyed what God is doing in your life. Thank you, brother. Ooh, give somebody a high five. Say, neighbor, I enjoy what God is doing in your life. 
Just keep on letting him bless you till he gets through. I'm not going to tell God stop blessing me because somebody don't like it. Bless me till you get Ah. Do I have a little time? Why should a glass full be envious of a pitcher full, be envious of a sink full, be envious of a tub full? If you full, you just full. You are glass full. You can't hold no more water. Instead of looking at everybody else and how God is moving them, look at what he's given you and use it since you have it. I'm almost there. I don't want to end on a negative. So let me jump over so the fellow had one talent. The reason he didn't progress was based upon how he viewed the giver. I, I want to talk to you now. I, I'm, I, I, I'm not humanist in my philosophical theology. I'm not humanist at all. But when you go to the mirror in the morning, you ought to say, Lord, I thank you for you. And then look at yourself in the mirror and say, Lord, I thank you for me too. Amen. I thank you because of what you have equipped me with. And I'm so glad you chose me for this mission. That I'm going to go after it with everything I have. Because I'm glad you picked me out. When you walked over my brother, walked over my sister, walked over many, many members of my family. But you chose me. And you chose me for them. I wish you'd understand this. I wish you'd understand this. You see, what God does is he selects people and he inserts them into the generations. He gives birth to the person who is going to change the generation. Everybody above you was broke. Everybody above you was ignorant. Everybody above you were drunkards and lies and cheats. But everybody below you. Because God said, I'm going to change this generation. And he chooses you and me to change a generation. And the reason I get so busy is because I give him praise for choosing me. And then he taught me. He taught me not to complain about my strengths. Oh, I'm going to talk to you now. Y'all might as well sit down unless you fall down. I hear you. I hear you. And I don't, uh, I don't profess a prophetic mantle. But experience in many instances gives your prophetic voice. I hear you. I hear you. You know, I, you know, the, the, my family. If there's going to be peace in the family, it's got to be me. Every time I look around, somebody's calling me. I'm so tired of them calling me. Uh, Johnny ain't got a job now. They calling me to see can I help him. I'm so tired of being called. Let me ask you something. Do you want to be the one calling? 
or the one who is called? Why, you, why are you complaining because God put you in position to help whoever is around you? You're not the one begging for your rent. You're not the one begging for your car note. You're the one who supplies car notes. And every time you supply a car note, God supplies you with a better car. And I feel... Huh? Give somebody a high five and say, shame on you complaining about your blessing complaining about your strength complaining about your leadership position I, you know another thing I learned I'm, and, and I'm getting ready to close I think I've kept you long enough another thing I've learned I've, I've learned over the years because there's times when I, I would say you know man I'm sick of these people man I ain't gonna be nowhere around them I'm tired. I'm done. And the Lord spoke to me once. Well, the Spirit spoke. I don't normally say the Lord because I may miss. But I can say the Spirit. It could be His Spirit or mine. The Spirit spoke to me and said, never get in a hurry to leave people to themselves because you may be the only light in the room. There are times when you're sick and tired and anytime you get sick and tired, that means you need to take some time away to regenerate because you're dealing with some people that they drain you so much that they have to allow you time to replenish because if they don't allow you time to replenish you ain't going to be no good to them or for yourself and you need the time and you got to give me time to get myself together so I can deal with you the critical piece here though The critical piece here, as I, as I get ready to close, because you have to appreciate his anointing on you and love him for choosing you. Yes, 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 yes. You have to suffer affliction according to affliction of the gospel, according to the power of God. And that's not out of that's according to, which means he's got enough power to move the affliction, but the affliction is part of your mission. You can't be gifted like you are and not be targeted. Somebody is sick of the fact that you're gifted like you are. And now you become a target. But here's what I've learned. Here's what I've learned. I have learned to thank God for your haters. Because let me put it like this. If you have no haters, you ain't that gifted. If you ain't got no haters, you ain't that gifted. And I thank God for my haters because they co-sign that God has his hand on me. When my friends don't talk up for me, my haters do. How come I bother you so much and don't even know you? Chosen you 
to gift you. The targeting just keeps you humble. <laughs> oh, you know, my wife is watching. I can't say what I want to say. Sometimes you marry your humility. Sometimes you give birth to your humility. Sometimes your family members are the agents for your humility. Because every time you read about being gifted in the scriptures, he always comes back with being humble. I said to a friend of mine once, I said, never believe what you have received is something you achieve. And he has to get the glory out of you. And glory does not come out of you being proud. Glory comes out of you being humble, acknowledging that I would be nowhere if it hadn't been for God. And so as I close, I hear the Lord say, Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Give somebody a high five and say, Neighbor, it's time for you to enter into the joy of the Lord. What does that mean? Entering into the joy of the Lord simply means that I can drive a wonder car up to the dealer. Somebody said, well, what is a wonder car? Wonder can it make it? But I can drive a wonder car and drive out with a Mercedes Benz. I have just entered into the joy of the Lord. When I can take my children who are brilliant children and I can write a check for their college education. I have just entered into the joy of the Lord. When I can expand the house of God without driving anybody crazy we have just entered into the house of the lord so i rose to tell you you already have it so get up and use it and don't let anybody stop you from being who god made you i'm gifted i'm anointed i love the lord and i'll operate in his spirit Give some money a high five for the second to the last time and say, I see it in you. I know it's in you. I'm praying it'll come out. Come out. Come out with your gift. Come out. Come out with your brilliance. Come out with a fresh anointing and let the devil know I'm going to do the will of the Lord and victory. Shall be mine. Touch somebody for the last time and say, Neighbor, you got it. You got it. Use it. Use it. Don't sit on it. Don't walk on it. No. Use it. I want to come back here and see folk that have moved in power. I want to come back here and see folk stepping up on the next level. I want to come back here and see God's children changing the community because you already have it. Use it. Use it. You're too gifted to be broke.
get off of welfare. You're too gifted. I want you to get one person by both hands. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust, sweet refrain, but holy on Jesus' name. On Christ, the solid rock I stand. Oh, other ground, sinking sand. Oh, other ground. Now, the Lord said something that we should give credence to. He said, whatever things you bind on earth, I will bind in heaven. He didn't say what I bind you by. He said what you buy on earth, I'll bind in heaven. What you loose, I'll loose in heaven. You're holding a binding hand and a loosing hand. Father, we come in the name of Jesus. I bind laziness. I bind depression. I bind low self-esteem. I bind the limited view that we have of ourselves. I bind the limited view we have of our gift. I bind satanic whispering. I bind demonic attacks. I come against everything that will cause me to feel like you did not gift me for this mission. I bind it right now. I bind insecurity. I bind embarrassment. I bind shyness in the name of Jesus. Now squeeze the other hand. I loose your talent. I loose your gift. I loose the proper attitude. I loose your enthusiasm. I loose your zeal. I loose your anointing. I loose you right now. I loose you right now. I loose you. You are a gift. You are a gift. I loose you right now. Move in your gift. Talk in your gift. Pray in your gift. Bless God in your gift. In the name of Jesus. And if you believe God, give him the glory for your gift. I'm coming out. I'm coming out. Somebody holler, I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. Real you gonna show up. Whether they can handle it or not, show up. I'm out. If you're not born again, you haven't given your life to Christ, now is the time to come. Now is the time to come. He's a savior. He's a keeper. And his grace what a marvelous deal. God knew that I couldn't bring anything to the table. So you know what he did? He made it a prerequisite for me not to bring anything to the table in order to save me. What a deal. Grace, unmerited 
favor. If you could merit it, it couldn't be grace. So God decided, he said, hey, they can't bring anything. So I'm going to make their lack of ability to bring something a prerequisite for being saved. Grace. All you got to do is come. Come, repent, repent, and acknowledge the fact that I need Christ. Father, we come in the name of Jesus. And for those who are online, let them call in. For those who are in the building, I pray that this word will rest indelibly in their spirits until that drawing day. And we say thank you, Lord. Amen. I want to, I, I, I brought a little gift for triumph. And I see somebody threw some money here. Is that mine or whose is that? <laughs> so, I want everyone who can to get an offering in your hand. Get the best you can. Now, I'm not trying to kill the offering because I'm giving a $500 gift. I'm not trying to kill the offering. But I don't want your baby's pampers money. I don't want your gas money. And pay your rent. Because I'm going to make my house know. Amen. So I don't want you to give out of your need tonight. I want you to give out of your abundance. What you can give cheerfully. Amen. Because if I had to give my telephone bill money, I ain't going to do that cheerfully. Amen. Amen. I, you know, I'm not trying to play any games with no offering. Amen. You tithe and you give a free will offering. But know this. The liberal soul shall be made fat. And that fat is anointed. Uh, Billy, I think it was Oral Roberts prayed, said, Lord, I need some money. Send me some money. God gave him an idea. <laughs> God gave him an idea. And that's the brilliance of being gifted is when God can show you something that's happening, trends, and show you now based on that, you need to do this. Your wealth is over here. Amen. Mm -hmm. so don't be angry when you see your brother and sister pull up in something nice I promise you they had to work for it amen, amen. amen. don't look at my house and get all nervous and mad I've got 9 million miles on American Airlines alone not Emirates not Delta not United not the private plane not the nine million on American alone worked away from my children I don't know how in the world they ended up in Ivy League schools and PhDs I was gone Whew. flying everywhere so don't get mad with me if you see me pull up in something nice I worked Amen. I used to sell gray cars. I owned my first house at 19. A millionaire at 21. Amen. When the dollar was bullish against the mark, I sold Mercedes and Porsches. I'd buy 8 and 10 at one time and sell them. Amen. So, so if you see a Ferrari come out of my driveway, don't get nervous. I worked. I worked the gift. Amen. Amen. And so now I want you to get raise yours to heaven. Whatever you're giving, if you have nothing, raise your hands. Father, we thank you for every gift, every giver, for every person in this room. And we celebrate the prophet tonight. We thank you for his vision. And we thank you for those in his company that helps to execute that vision 
let this be a lighthouse in this neighborhood and in this community and around the world. And we speak it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Are we all coming? Is that how it works? All right. Come on. Don't be shy. I give you to the watchman on the wall, the overseer, the prophet, the preacher, the pastor, God's man. Come on, somebody clap for Bishop. As you're giving. Didn't he preach a dynamic word? Didn't he bless his house? Are you blessed tonight? Are you happy tonight? Are you alive tonight? Are you well tonight? The Bible says that the promises of God are yes and amen. How many people know that they got a promise on their life? Come on, I should hear some more people. You got a promise on your life. Come on, you got expectation that God is still going to do exceedingly and abundantly and above all that I can ask or think I prophesy what you've been asking for. God's getting ready to give it to you. What's been on your heart? The Spirit of God is getting ready to manifest. If your seed tonight was a demonstration of what God was getting ready to increase, God said, as you give tonight, as you sow tonight, I'm getting ready to bless you with overflow. Can somebody shout overflow? Somebody say, too much. I hear the Lord say, more than enough. Look at your neighbor and tell them more than enough is getting ready to hit your house. Look at your other neighbor and tell them more than enough is getting ready to happen in your life. What you've been looking for, somebody been looking for something. You haven't just been expecting it. Hear me by the Spirit of God. You've been anticipating it. As a matter of fact, your energy just went through the roof because somebody believing it's already better for me. Look at somebody next to you and tell them it's already better for me. See, I didn't come for nobody else, but I came for me tonight. There's some things that I've been looking for. There's been some things I've been working on. High five somebody and tell them Jesus is about to do it. Oh, I feel God right there. Everything we've been building, try on. Everything we've been sowing, God said, increase has just happened in this house. I prophesy every debt has been canceled. Ah, new money, new doors, new opportunity, new provisions. Somebody shout out oh, the floor. Look at somebody and tell them I've been waiting on God to do this one. So I got to give God 30 seconds of supernatural praise in advance like I know it's already. I said it's already. Tell somebody it's already done. I'm not worried about it no more. I'm not scared of it no more. What's mine is mine. Give him 30 seconds to shout like you know. You're entering into the greatest season of your life. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This is going to be a great season. to my builders it takes work ethic and push to get yourself moving sometimes but you got a mindset that knows God is giving you the strength of continuation somebody give God a hand clap of prayer yes sir I 
feel my help coming. That's right, when the babies dance, when the children leap, oh, man, to man, I prophesy health is coming to your body. I prophesy health is coming to your family. I break every stronghold. I break every demonic force coming against your life. When you dance, it's giving God an advanced praise like my expectation and my posture is that God did it again. I said God did it again. I said God doing it and he's doing it for me. Yes, sir. It's a total man shot. See, this praise is for somebody who almost died, but you're still here. Come on! I'm still standing. I'm still standing like a tree planted by the rivers of water. You ought to bring forth fruit in your season. something. See, when praises go up, blessings come down. I said, when praises go up, I said, blessings are coming down. Praise is humbly for the upright. And if you're still standing, give them one more run like you know it's your season. 
rocha. Building ain't never easy. But it's necessary. Don't negotiate with emotions and thoughts about what God has called you to build. You're blessed. You're blessed. You're favored. Be like Mary. You carrying something. I favored you to carry something not for you but for the world. So much favor on your life when people come into your spirit, your circle. Their gifts should leap. I prophesy every dormant gift awakens now. Everything choking out your faith. Ah, may that cord be cut right now in Jesus' name. I prophesy divine promotion, hands lifted. Antagonize hell. With the fruit of your lips, begin to bless the name of the Lord. Riketo mansha na mancho boho. Rede di anna manna na masata. Mande ke bata ko boho shana mansia. All things have passed away. Madaba kambo And behold, all things are becoming new. A new mind, a new anointing, a new blessing, a new confidence. Oh, dedicate your life back to God right now. We're going to do one big altar call right here. Dedicate your life back to God. I will affect change. I will be faithful. My, I will be a fighter. I will fight the good fight of faith. I will prove what is good and acceptable. I will move into the perfect will of God. Bless him with your worship tonight. Come on. This is a spiritual season. This is a prophetic season. Come on, foretelling, seeing your future, manifesting God's glory. I'm giving you 15 seconds and pray. Open your mouth and pray. Randa, Taba, Riketa Bansho, Taba, He's healing. He's delivering. And He's opening up doors for you. Mataba. You're stronger than you've ever been. Hamba. New strength. Hamba. Tokamansha. This new strength has to come. I prophesy new strength is coming to your bones. New strength is coming to your blood. New strength is coming to your mind. New strength is coming to your life. New strength. New strength. New strength. New strength. Uh, double. I will renew your strength. Mount up with wings as eagles. Uh, with wings as eagles. Mount up with wings as eagles. Whoa, somebody's taking flight right there. You're taking flight right there. I'm laying aside the weight. I'm laying aside the sickness. I'm laying aside the addiction. I'm laying aside the pain. I'm laying aside the problem. I'm laying aside every weight and the sin that so easily besets me. Man. Oto Mancha, man of God. Man of God. The fight, God says, is necessary. Sometimes we seem as if things are unnecessary. But I wanted to come over here and grace you with a level of love and support to tell you that you are not alone. The provisions in which God says you are to provide for your household for the thing that I will do in this week, I am going to begin to make your workload easy. 
For the Spirit of God says, I have not given you the gift to work, to be overworked. To work, to be overwhelmed. But the Spirit of God says, because your labor is not in vain. For your yoke will be easy. And your burden is light. I want to lay hands on you, man of God. The wealth of God's provision, the gift that he gave, makes room for you now. Divine provision. Divine provision. You will not be overworked. You will not be overwhelmed. The Spirit of God says, I override. <laughs> Satan's attack against your life. And the Spirit of God said, remember my son. I won't prophesy to many, but you are the one that God called out today. Satan saw a hedge of protection that Job could not see. And God removed the hedge. So that Satan could attack this man's body. That he could attack his life. But as Job took a posture, that posture was, even though he slays me, yet, here come power, yet will I trust him. Man of God, you won't be like Job. You won't lose your wife. You won't lose your family. You won't lose your lands. You won't lose your goods. You won't lose your money. You won't lose support. Your posture is getting ready to be the roots of your success. As I lay hands on you, every gift that has hit the bottom of the spiritual floor, it is elevating right now on the inside of you. And I declare it done in the name of Jesus. May the power of God hit you in Jesus' name. Somebody say your presence is here. Manta command show command say hands lifted. There's a peace and a grace that hits your life. There's a peace and a grace that God wants your life to operate in. See, let me tell you something about being a human being. The only thing that stops a human being is infirmity divine activity overrides infirmity and I'm gonna go why do I say that because Jesus said for I have been touched with the feeling of your infirmity watch this in all points every level every angle every perspective the spirit of God has already dealt with the infirmity in your body I called you healed right now in the name of Jesus no more church going home sick no more ministry without manifestations no more being faithful and being fatigued because you fighting the good fight of faith I prophesy every infirmity is broken. Every disease is broken. Every level of emotional health be broken. Every mental health be broken. Every stressor be broken. Every addiction be broken. My God, every root worked against your gift. My God, the willpower of your spirit is becoming stronger than your body lay hands on this entire church and call you strong because you're fearfully and wonderfully made. Come on, somebody worship God on that prophecy right there. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. I'm fearfully not sick, not broken, not dead, not hurt, not level of stroke, no depression, no anxiety, no love lost, no death. I override every spirit tonight that will not go home with you because you are free. And let the free in the Lord shout that I'm free. Shout I'm free. And I'm free indeed. Come on, open your mouth and say I'm free. And I'm free indeed. Every shackle, every chain be broken over 
Freedom is a choice. Building is a choice. Bettering your life is a choice. Let me tell you something and I'm gone. I can't have hands laid on me by a general such as Bishop Noel Jones and not utilize the transfer. What I love about anointing like oil is because it ain't like gas. Gas burns fast, but oil burns. I prophesy in this entire house long life. Yay! The perpetuity, meaning the existence of your life, still has meaning long life be added unto you now father I, I thank God for for bishop thank you for the transfer thank you for the endorsement we thank God for the push we thank God for the promotion we thank God for what will be next we thank God for us now for the substance of now are the things that are hoped for as we walk out these doors, evidence. I prophesy it's evident that you are evidence. Somebody catch that. It's evident that you are evidence. Still standing and still here. It's evident that you are evidence. Satan lost in Jesus' name. Clap your hands for the Lord. Hallelujah to God. I want to thank each and every one of you for coming here tonight. Let's give a great big God bless you for my beautiful wife. I put my hand up on my hip. When I dip, you dip, we dip. And you put yours and you put mine. And we dip and y'all stop. You can say that when you got 17 years of marriage. I got married when I was 21. I lied, though. Because I lied about my age. I told I was 24, but I was 21. Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> and I thank God for my wife and my children. Uh, they ride with me. My baby about to go to sleep. I love you. Uh, I thank God for it. Come on, let's slap my hands for Dr. Renee Fowler, Hornbuckle. Come on! We love you. All of these things would not be possible without you. God grace you with centuries of ministry, global ministry, supporting and helping, pushing, providing. My favorite word, sustaining. It, it takes a lot to sustain. The sustenance of everything that you are is grafted in this building. And we as a church, Triumph Worship Center, thank you and we honor you and we bless you because you are a great gift to the body in Christ. I got a special gift for y'all on Sunday, so I'll wait to do that. I'll skip this way. Come on, let's clap our hands for Pastor Cat, our congregational pastor. I love you. All of our teams, our production teams, my assistants. Come on, clap for everybody. I can stand here all night and... All the armor bearers and security. And Bishop Bobby Baker. Shout for my EP. Yee! I love y'all. But before we go, uh, I just want to say thank you uh, to our music staff, uh, to our praise and worship team. Y'all be like, y'all ride or die for dot com. I love y'all. That's right. Each and every one of y'all. And I want each and every one of y'all find beautiful people to be here on Sunday. Oh, it got quiet like, right? Hey, y'all gonna be here on Sunday? Y'all promise? Don't lie to the prophet then. All right, all right.
right, Sunday we'll see. I got a special gift, got a special guest. Uh, it's going to be a fun-filled weekend for each and every one of us. Uh, dynamic duos are happening in the house of God. Father, we thank you, God, for your people. We thank you, God, for Bishop Noel Jones, and he spoke such a dynamic word in his life. Bless his life, bless his wife. Continue to bless him with favor, traveling grace in his body and his bones, his ministry, his pocketbook, his investments, everything he touches. Let it continue to turn to gold. We thank God for this season as we go out of here rejoicing and happy and excited about what God is going to continue to do. We will look ahead, be confident in those things. He that began a good work will complete that work. He going to continue to do a good work in Jesus' mighty name. Love on somebody as you're on your way out and tell them you're excited about their future.